Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and welcome to another StarCraft 2 England cast. Today I have got game one of a best of three, it's from the Zotac Cup. It is between TSL's Revival, the Teal Zerg in the top right position, he's up against Cute Zerg, who is playing as the Red Protoss. That name may not have been thought out that well. I always find that really fun by the way, whenever someone puts a race name in their name and then they don't play that race. It's kind of like when you started were you like I love Zerg I'm always gonna play Zerg and then you realize actually you're way better at Protoss and then suddenly it doesn't quite make sense here. Yeah, I could see that happening quite a lot. Yes so far everything looking okay. Pile on down on the low ground that means a forge fast expansion slash nexus first and it's a bold move. Seriously, that is legit a bold move on this map. So many pro Protoss players are actually going for a gateway first on this map because it's really difficult to get a wall off because essentially here if you want to completely wall off your main and natural you have to go at this sort of angle which is a large, large area and as a result it can be awkward if there's a big push coming in from a Zerg player. So really cute Zerg banking on revival, going economic, not trying to go for any early cheese but that doesn't always mean that will be the case. Sometimes we do see some scary stuff out of these Korean Zerg players, but here we go. 14 pull. 14 15 pull is absolutely fine. The probe scouting, I don't think it's forced cross spawns on this map. It doesn't, I don't believe it is on this version of it, so that's all cool. And yeah, forge down, so that's fine. You definitely have to go forge first on this map. There's no way you can't afford to do that. And so far, so good good by the looks of things. We've got them just checking each other, knowing where each other are. This probe is sitting there making sure that no hatchery is going down for the time being, just on a patrol move. So this delays things a little bit. Revival, I'm just going to go take his third first though because he's like, I know you're going to block my natural so I'm going to take my third and you don't have too much of a choice in that. And you see this done by so many Zerg players based purely on the fact that, well, they've got to take their third anyway, assuming it's a fast expansion, so why not just take their third first and reduce the time that you have to wait. So that is all good news. The Nexus now on its way down for Cute Zerg. And remember, guys and girls, if you do like my videos, please make sure you like them, tell your friends, subscribe, and leave a cool comment, because it really does help me out massively. And if nothing else, your cool comments and things like that really motivate me to produce more and more and more content. Even though I love it, if I know people are liking it, if you want me to change anything, let me know. Like the games I cast, or more Heart of the Swarm, more Wings of Liberty. All you've got to do is ask, leave a comment, and I will try and cater to it. And of course, Twitter. Check me out on Twitter, because Twitter is cool. I love tweets. Literally, I do. Tweets are one of my favourite things. It's an addiction. And you know you want to help me feed my addiction. Anyway, four minutes. Here comes down the expansion in two, one, bang. Oh, just off on the timing there. But yeah, hatchery down. Four minutes, 14, four minutes, 15. So all good news. Good timings for everything here so far. Good news for Cute Zerg as well because it means his base is going to get up safely. And as you can see, even though the cannon's there, you could skirt Zergling. Six Zergling scouted through, round in this way, go straight up into the main base. One may die at most, so... That's where you can really run into some huge problems um, going for a forge fast expansion on this map. So again, it's something to consider when you're playing yourself, any Protoss on Untomb Valley. Gateway first, in my opinion, is a slightly stronger build. It's less, well not stronger, less risky. And risks are something that you do have to take at strategic moments. And it's fine in a best of three and against someone like Revival who you can pretty much assume is going to go three hatch early without any aggression. But if you're on a ladder in a best of one, maybe you don't want to take the risk. Especially if you're in like Masters or anything, because it seems like everyone cheeses there. It's ridiculous. Um, anyway, so far, so good Cybercore. Nearly finished up. We've got two gas out for the Protoss. 200 gas sitting there. Warp Gate Tech starts instantly. Plus one starts inf instantly as well. So that is a bit of an indicator of what could be coming. Which is, of course, some air pressure. Warp Gate harassment. Uh, War Prism Harassment could be okay because you've got some dead space around here, that's good news. Immortal Sentry is good on every map against Zerg pretty much. And what else? You can have big gateway pushes as well. All the plus one says is that generally speaking, you're going to have some kind of ground army. It's unlikely to see Stargate to be honest, just due to the fact that you wouldn't be investing in the plus one ground weapons if you were going to go for Mass Phoenix for example. Overlord scanning this out, looks like it's going to be a quick expansion actually out of Cute Zerg and this is exceptionally fast. 
It has been scouted though. It can be seen by this overlord. That's the important thing. So now straight away Revival knows that his opponent is going for a quick third. And as a result, is going to be slightly vulnerable early on in this game. So, will Revival try to exploit that? Or will he just go for a super quick fourth base? We'll wait and see the Stalker on its way across though at the moment for q -Zerg. He's going to try and do some damage. He is going to try and pick up a Queen or something. Four Zerglings there though. Some creep spread. The Zerglings plus the Queen can deal with one Stalker quite comfortably. The Overlord even going in there. And well, the stalk is just going to get rebuffed back, and that's fine. We've got a cannon now on the way down, a complete wall off at the third, which is essential, really, on this map. If you don't get the complete wall off and you take a third this early, you're going to run into some problems. The robotic facility now on its way. The third and fourth gas. The stalker still under some pressure, doing a little bit here. We've got the roach warren on its way down. We've got lair nearly finished up as well for revival. This stalker is going to get away because speed is just so long until it finishes, so that's fine. The lair, as I said, down third and fourth gas are uh, no one and two gas and third and fourth gas here so the reason you do that is because again it just confuses it potentially confuses your opponent knowing whether you're on six or four gas Infestation Pit on its way down, Twilight Council on its way down, plus one ground weapons just finished for the Protoss player, no upgrades as of yet for Revival. And while we've got this kind of just macroing up phase, let me say, remember everyone, if you do have any comments on my casting or constructive criticisms, I always love to get them, so either tweet them to me or leave them in a comment, because that way I can continue to try and improve and produce the best content I can, which would be super helpful. And especially as I've been in casting for just over a year now, I'm always looking for some good feedback. So, as we've got, we've got, well, the Observer on its way across. We've got plus two starting up now. That's the purpose of the Twilight Council. We've got the Macro Hatch on its way. Burrow coming down as well, along with Pathogen Gland. So potentially some Burrowed Infester harassment, which won't be too successful, judging by the fact there's a Photon Cannon at the entrance to each base. It will detect those Burrowed Zerglings, uh, Burrowed Infestors rather. So don't know whether that was the plan the Viber was going for. Maybe just to keep them a bit safer, which is always a good move. Also opens up the option for Tun and Claws, should you want to get that down, do a little bit of aggression under force fields, which you do see Revival do occasionally, so we'll wait to see whether that does come down. Now, looking around as well, we've got the Robotics Bay just starting up, so that's teching up to Colossi very, very quickly. A Chrono Boost coming out on a Twilight Council that is researching nothing, but now just starts blinking time, so that's fine, the plus two coming out, so a really tech-heavy, upgrade-heavy build out of Cute Zerg at the moment. Meanwhile, the fourth base just finishing up for Revival, he's got his fourth, uh, seventh and eighth gas now, rather, on its way. These roaches and zergings finally clearing up the rocks. The creep spread is slowly getting there, just joining up the bases. Revival not really focusing on that, as you can see, by the fact that he's only got a queen per hatchery. That's fine. He's getting a good number of roachling and a couple of infestors here as well. So this could be an aggressive push. There's not much on the field for Cute Zerg at the moment. He really does just have a handful of units. One stalker, one zealot, one immortal, and five sentries is it. But he's got a lot more gateways on the way, so he can start ramping up his production should he want to. This single, these two Zerglings just on their way over, getting a little bit of information about what's going on, getting good coverage to see anything that could be coming out. Great use of this warp in here to get a few Stalkers coming around the side, could potentially pick off some Overlords if they wanted to. Extended Thermal Lance now started. Burrowed Zerglings just giving great information about, hey, where are things moving? Where are they all going? They see this probe, that's important to work out what it's going to be doing. We have the lair coming, the hive coming down at the same time as Spire. That means Broodlords is always going to be a possibility. A quite early hive and spire as well actually so the broodlords could be delayed it could be just that hey i'm gonna get up the spire in order to get corruptors to deal with a good count of colossi but all in all it's all looking fine we do have this overlord here for the time being though the zergling hasn't actually burrowed i'm surprised about that because you usually expect to see the zergling burrow just to force an observer to come over and delay the base even more but to be honest, the creep spread alone is going to be a big delay because it takes over a minute for that to recede completely, which is very, very frustrating if you've ever had it done against you. Here, though, we have plus three Protoss weapons coming out. The additional Colossus on its way, that takes us up to two, I do believe. Yep, it will do. Meanwhile, a pylon hidden up here, the fourth base coming down nicely with some spine crawlers for defense. I think that's something that a lot of Zerg players, especially can just stand a master's miss out on and something that you really, really do need to get because for the sake of two, uh, 200 minerals for the spine quarters plus the extra 100 for the drones, 
it really is worthwhile because you can lose far more than that by a warp in of say four zealots. This base hidden up here, that is going to be fine. It probably will get spotted eventually, but it doesn't matter too much. The observer giving great scanning information. The great Aspire starting at a very early point actually, so that is going to be pretty fun to watch. But for the moment, Cute Zerg being incredibly passive, just macroing up, getting up his fourth base. That forced the response from Revival obviously to get his fifth when he saw his Overlord get taken out. Good number of gateways upgrades going nicely. The double robotics facility getting out a lot of Colossi, but in comes Revival with what is a huge amount of aggression. He gets some good fungal growth, it's a huge corrupt account, and to be honest, I think Revival is going to steamroll right now. He caught q third in unprepared position, and with the Infestors, with the Roaches, with the fact that corrupt Colossi have been taken out by the Corruptors, that very well could be GG, and as we can see here, 14 more Roaches, 48 Zergans behind this Adrenal Glands on the way out, 2-2 on the way out as well for Revival. He is just pushing forward, no energy left on the Infestors really, so he could get some fungal growth off, or he could chuck down some infested turns, but for the moment looking like he's going to pull back, and I'm surprised he isn't burrowing these infestors. As I say that, he burrows the infestors, but yeah, this is all fine. Straight away revival remaxes, and with this remax, he could very well win the game, because there's a lot of Zerglings there without the Colossus, or rather just the one Colossus. It's going to be insanely difficult to try and hold off that pressure. We do have some Zealots coming into the 5th base, but as you can see, Revival pulls back instantaneously in order to deal with those. With the fact that these Zerglings are now 2-2, they're going to do great damage in order to deal with that. Spine Call is preemptively getting thrown down to prevent anything like that happening again. Meanwhile, some aggression coming in here by Revival. He loops around, he goes straight to try and get the complete surround on all of those Stalkers. He picks off the Immortal as well, which means the Roaches are going to be so much more effective. A great fungal growth goes down, and Revival just streaming units across. A good warp-in of Zealots, though, trying to deal with the high numbers of Zerglings as best he can. q -Zerg is definitely not going to go down with our fight, as we can see, and that is great to see. The Stargate coming down as well as the Templar Arc, the Dark Shrine, rather. The Dark Shrine will allow Archons to come out. The Stargate for the Mothership, a good blink forward, trying to pick off as many of these Infestors as he can. He got a few. The rest of those Stalkers were unfortunately cleaned up, though. Looking at the work count, 78 apiece. So that could be obviously better for Revival, but he doesn't need a huge number due to the fact that he's already got Broodlords out. And Cute Zerg is sitting there with hardly any army. 40, well, 50 army supply to 100. And with Broodlords in there and a Stalker count that is in single figures, you are never, ever going to have too much fun there. Of course, Cute Zerg does know. And with this Revival, he very well could win. I. There we go, GG straight away. There's no way you can deal with that with so few stalkers. So, game one goes to revival. Remember, if you like the video, like the video. Uh, leave a cool comment and subscribe. I'll catch you at game two any second. I'll see you there.